Hey everyone, it's Tim Holtz and I'm here at Sizzix headquarters. Now, did you know there is a way that you can add dimension using your dies? So cool. And what it's going to take is a dimensional cutting pad. This is an actual cutting pad that creates kind of a, a dip in the cutting pad, so to speak, to allow you to take a die and still have it adhered to your surface. Let me explain how that is. The dimensional cutting pad itself is this square piece and it's still made out of the same cutting pad material for your Sizzix machines. But down the center, there is this kind of beveled groove, and that groove is on both sides. So just like a regular cutting pad, you can use either side for this. And it slowly tapers in, and what that does is that re removes or releases the pressure when you're running a die through. Here's what it really does. When you take a die, normally a die itself would cut an entire shape, right? You'd run it through your paper, take it through your machine, and it's going to cut out that opening. But if you take a dimensional cutting pad and you place it on part of the die, Instead of cutting out the entire thing, it can leave that shape still attached to the paper, and that will allow you to create dimension on the surface. Let me show you how to do it. What we're going to do is choose a die that you want to work with. Now, there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind when you're working with a dimensional cutting pad, and that is the fact that when you take a die, that die still needs to fit within the cutting pad. It can't hang out past. It can't be a longer die that doesn't fit the cutting pad itself. And you're going to take the die and you're going to place it down on your surface. This could be background paper, but for the sake of the demo, I'm just going to work with colored cardstock. Now here's how we build our Sizzix sandwich. I'm going to work with the Vagabond, so I'm going to take my basic platform. I have my thin die adapter, and normally when we work with a thin die, we sandwich it between two cutting pads. But because we're adding a dimensional cutting pad, that is going to replace one of these. So get it out of your way. I always place mine aside this way, it avoids confusion when I'm getting ready to build this up. And here's all we're going to need to do. We're going to take this and we're going to place down that paper, place our die down, and when we place that dimensional cutting pad on top, we need to position that groove where we want to eliminate the pressure. And in this case, for the butterfly, it's going to be right down the center of the body. Now, you can run it this way. If you run it through your machine this way, it's going to kind of hit a little speed bump, right? Sometimes you may have no other choice because of your design. But for this one, because it's a square, I can also position it this way. So really play around with however works for you. But here's a tip. You're going to want some type of low-tack tape. This could be washi tape or some type of medical tape. And I want to position this first. I'm going to place this down, and I'm just going to stick down my die so it doesn't shift because my cutting pad, I want to position right over that space. And you can see right down in there. You can make sure that you see inside that cutting pad where it's going to kind of eliminate some of that pressure. Now we're going to run it through the machine. All right, I'm going to pick up the entire thing, place it into my Vagabond. There we go. Give it one last check, just make sure it's ready to go, and we're going to run this through. All right. So once we take this out, because we had that dimensional cutting pad going over that body, that's where it's going to eliminate the pressure. So I'm going to peel back this tape. There we go, and we'll peel this off the card. And here's what we've got. This is what I love about uh, working with Sizzix and all the different tools. So here I've taken the detail one, and of course, I can clean out any of these little openings, but now I've got that detail dimension. And I love the whole versatility of working with this because this one was the detail layer, which means I could maybe mat a piece of colored cardstock underneath, right? I can take that and I can see that through the card. In this first example, we use the solid part because this particular die has a solid and a detailed layer, and then it used that for the dimension and layered with the detail. So there's a lot of kind of mix and match opportunities when you're playing around with your dies. Let me just kind of take it a little bit further because once you start playing with this dimensional cutting pad and you realize that where you put it on your die completely impacts the effect that you're going to get. This other, imp this other effect, really cool. Take a look at this. If you are a planner and you like to incorporate uh, different hidden journaling or photos into a planner, take a look at using this to create a hidden tab. Maybe we want to put a photo, some journaling, and we've used that dimensional cutting pad to actually create a paper tab on the side of this. And here's, here's kind of the breakdown of it. Let me just explain this. So what we've done is started with our piece of paper, right? We've taken that die. But when we go to place a dimensional cutting pad, instead of placing that groove down the body, we've actually placed that groove off to the side. Because remember, wherever that groove is on your dimensional cutting pad, 
it's going to eliminate the pressure and not cut in that area. So this way it cut the entire butterfly, but didn't cut in that area. And that's what left us this tab. But of course, depending on your shape, you can see that you really lose a lot of definition. So what's the solution? Well, take that same shape, cut it a second time, and then you have the ability to layer the full shape on top. So many cool creative possibilities. But we're going to continue to take it one step further. We can create all sorts of different pop-up and dimension with different dies by using the dimensional cutting pad. Here for the tree line, this normally cuts the entire tree line, including this bottom. But if we place this die and, of course, our dimensional cutting pad goes along the bottom edge of that die, you can see that it has the ability to cut everything, but wherever we have that dimensional cutting pad, that little groove, it's not going to cut that bottom edge, so it leaves it attached. Now, another trick, because we have that fallout in the back, you can see here on a card, that little fallout, you can simply cut a second piece of cardstock and fill that in so it creates a cool pop-up. You can do that with that, of course, one of my favorites is Cityscape, because we've got that great skyline. But instead of attaching it, we make a pop-up card. And you can see here all of the finished detail. You can take this and layer as many different dies as you want, creating this effect. It, it gives a great dimensional illusion or effect to any of your papercraft or mixed media projects. That is the dimensional cutting pad.